Hello everyone, a warm and melodious welcome to our music production workshop. We are thrilled to have each one of you here embarking on this harmonious journey together. We have Pranav and Mohit from our Accord Music Society's production team to conduct the workshop. So get ready to unlock the symphonies within you. Over to you Pranav. So hi guys, uh, I welcome you all for our first ever uh, music production workshop. And uh, yeah, like uh, the you know, like basic agenda will be like the first uh, 
we'll be uh, telling you guys about uh, you know, like what tools are we going to use and what basically music production is and you know, like how it is being done, what are the elements that go into and everything. And for that, we have uh, Mohit here who will be uh, you know, like explaining about it and you know giving you a very deep um, you know, like deep intro into it and walking you through over every basic detail. And after that, I'll be demonstrating, uh, you know, like a, a demo song, and then I'll be, you know, like demonstrating a live, uh, you know, like uh, making how to make a song live. So yeah, like, I think Mohit will take on. From... Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Mohit. We can... yeah. yeah. Yeah, guys. Thank you for joining in. Uh... Today we'll talk about a online production platform called Soundrap. It's from uh, it's from uh, Spotify, so it's uh, totally free to use. But uh, there are some elements to it that you have to uh, there are some you have to actually pay and uh, you have to pay for the plugins and everything that you are uh, going to use in that. So some are free. So we will focus on those and carry forwards. So uh, allow me to present my screen and let me know if you can uh, hear the audio. Uh, can you hear the audio? Uh, no, Mohit, you can't. Uh, I think, you know, like, uh, you will have to share only the particular tab and not the whole screen. Okay. Yeah, so I separate the tab only and trying to stream, stream again. Yeah. So I guess you can hear this right now, right? Yeah, 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 we can hear it. So the basic layout for a draw, uh, DAW or digital audio or station will be that you can see on the left side, there are several uh, named columns over here. So you can see. Uh, each of these columns contains a separate track for a particular instrument, OK? So if we zoom in, you can see this particular track is for the drums. So how do I get to it, actually? Uh, we can add a new track over here. Just on the bottom of the column, you can see there's an Add New Track button. So you click on here. And you will see, you will, uh, you will get to choose what kind of instrument you want to add on this track. So for this one, we can actually start a production uh, by using the drums or the bass, because the drums or the bass will follow the tempo of the song. And without the melody or any chords, uh, we can play out or arrange the song using the drums or the bass only. So we'll uh, add the drums for now. So when we add the drums, here you can see the instrument's name is visible. They have named it Tasty for some reason. So another thing you will notice on this platform, you can see there's an icon to the left of every track, OK? So when you click on each any of them, you will get to see the options to control their parameters will appear over here. 
So when I click on this, uh, this tasty track and click on over here, zoom in, you see uh, there's a layout for the instrument, the drum kits probably. Here we'll see the patterns view where you can draw the beats and program everything. And also there's a piano roll for painting them manually. You guys may have a, uh, some idea about uh, MIDI and everything, right? You, if you, yes, uh, you can type in the chat and we'll know. Yeah. So over here, you can see if you have a MIDI controller or keyboard, basically, or your the t keyboard actually you type on, you see that they have assigned some keys to it. For example, by uh, type. And also have other kind of instruments here. Say we want to have a basic uh, acoustic drum set. So we can browse through all of this and try it out. For now, I'll choose this one. Called Clean Red. So you can hear, right? In the pattern step, we can actually have a have this programmed and so that we can uh, arrange everything and let it play. So for this one song, we are actually using the tempo over here. It's a tempo of 108 BPMs. So if I let it play, you can hear the metronome alone. Yeah, I think we should uh, demonstrate in a new project actually. Sorry for that. I add a new track uh, using the drums. We choose the drum kits over here, use the clean red. And then start arranging from here. So if you let it play, you can uh, hear the metronome alone. Yeah, you get the idea, right? So if we uh, arrange for a few bars, you can see in the tracks panel, they are allowing you to have some controls over here. If you hover over here, you can actually repeat this whole pattern by just simply clicking it. And then also, you will see here, there's a button to drag the track. So you can stretch it along as you like. You can shrink it or you can expand it. So also in in their contextual menu, if you right click, everything comes. There are some options that will be very helpful. Uh, if you position the cursor, cursor anywhere, and then you right click and choose split region, it will split the pattern. And then you can place anywhere. Or also you can use this feature to insert your any kind of other patterns over here in these blank regions. So the in-depth uh, arrangement and everything will actually be discussed uh, by Pranav actually, I think. So the basic uh, workflow and everything I will share in this demo. So when you are done with the arranging any pattern or any track, you will want to actually add instruments, uh, 
I mean, add effects such as like uh, you want to configure the EQ or compress the sound or adjust the levels like uh, increase the volumes in the overall track and mix everything when you are when you get with uh, adding any amount of instruments you can add guitars also you can record your own guitar if you have an audio interface using this option here so when you actually want to record something into a track in any kind of DAW you will have uh, some kind of buttons on the track panel there will be a button called record arm or simply record button so if you hit that you will see that the recording is actually not on right now you also have another record button over here in any DAW you will have similar kind of control set so when you hit this one you will see a pre-roll will appear that will allow you to get ready with your instrument and start with the playback so when you do that you will see the recording will be printed over here on this track So I actually do not have a guitar connected to my interface right now because I'm talking over the mic. So you will see this one is actually blank if you play back. Yeah. Can I actually have my guitar connected? Uh, will you allow me to? Get my guitar connected. You can. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so now I have I have to actually mute my mic and go with the process. So yes, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, bro. Yes. Yes. So for uh, this demo, I have actually recorded a few bars over here. Uh, let's play what I have recorded. So we'll notice we are having one problem. Uh, there might be some kind of delay or might be due to my inability to play properly. We have actually a syncing problem over here. So you will see the drums are played first and the my guitar part is coming a bit late. Right. So we can adjust those kind of problems by uh, by using these stream functions. We can trim this uh, performance by dragging this and and this uh this software this online web app actually uh, allows you to work like any other dog like uh, to adjust the audio and everything precisely so what you would like to do if you fit control and drag it along you can place it anywhere so what i will do now I will zoom in by using the control button by placing it in a covering it up in a blank space you can see it's getting zoomed in and also by pressing alt and scrolling we can zoom it vertically so I did that right now and let's position the cursor over here 
So you can also notice there are some numbers present over here. Here is one, two, three, four, and so forth. So what we will do is uh, position the cursor over here, and we'll focus on these peaks over here, right? This piece, the peaks actually are telling us that uh, the notes that we're playing will actually align with these grids. So if we hit control again and drag this, we can position this over here. So I guess this will be fine for now. So let's have a listen again. What I'm doing right now is adjusting the drum pattern a bit so it does not sound that boring. One thing you also have noticed that uh, I just added a note over here but this platform is actually repeating every pattern that we have made by using this hovering over on this corner, this uh, reload icon that's coming in. So if we hit that, whatever will be in here, if we adjust that also, it will be applied on this new bar also. So apart from that, uh, uh, Instead of using these uh, squares input methods, input uh, sequence, we can actually have a better look by using the piano rule. So if we also uh, hold control and scroll, we can zoom in and out of this view. So here the scroll bar over here. I think we should also add hi-hats to it. Okay, wait. This closed hi-hats, I think. So from here on out, uh, we can actually add another instrument as we like. We can add the bass parts. We can add uh, also record our vocals. And everything will actually appear over here in similar to this uh, tracks, everything. And then when we are done recording and everything, we have to actually make sure the timings are OK the tracks are actually sounding good. Uh, when we are actually uh, say any ideas about like sounding good, we will actually have to uh, apply processes by using plugins. In a proper DAW, we will call them uh, plugins. You can have them uh, come pre-installed in a DAW, like FL Studio or Say Reaper. 
So if uh, you have, if you are not finding any particular uh, plugin that you require for a particular job, you can also have add-ons installed, uh, sourced from online from third party sources. So Pranav, will you take it from here? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll take it forward from here, yeah. So I hope uh, you know, like everybody who you know, like saw this demonstration would have a basic idea of how things work around. And I'll continue from here. Uh, I hope you all can see my screen right now. Yes, it's visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So yeah, uh, so what I have done here actually is just you know uh, took a random song that came to my mind and just you know like, tried to replicate it using the software. So yeah, um, before we get started, I'd like to you know like uh, repeat over a few things for people who might have joined early, uh, later. Uh, so yeah, like right now we are using, uh, we are demonstrating how to produce music for uh, using an online tool called Soundtrap. The Soundtrap is uh, from Spotify and they have made this thing. And yeah, like basically what, uh, how, um, how music production is done is uh, by using softwares called Digital Audio Workstations or DAW, D-A-W in short. And from you know like a bedroom music production till very professional music production or you know film scoring everybody uses kind of the software and the degree and the level and how much they put in their work and how many tracks and the processing all this matters in different levels and different degrees so that is the basics right now what we are going to see here right uh, in this demonstration is how this uh, how uh, any song that you might listen or you might have in your mind can be you know like put in to the software and you can just you know like bring uh, your uh, imaginations or your um, what is it, creativity and bring it out and give life to it uh, so yeah like let's move forward i'll just play this song um, i hope you guys know what song is this and if you know you can just you know like uh, put it in the comments what song this is We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore like we used to do. We don't love anymore. What was all of it for? Ooh, we don't talk anymore like we used to do. I just heard you found the one you've been looking. You've been looking for. I wish I would. So that was a quick demonstration on, you know, what can be done in this uh, software. And yeah, like it is not limited to this. It is only limited to your imaginations, but yeah, things safe. Um, there are, you know, like different levels of software and different levels of plugins available. And 
what the professional uh, you know like um, producers like uh, let's say arman or charlie putter selena gomez or whoever it might be they use a different kind of uh, tools but yeah all in all the spirit and the you know like the concept behind any song production or music production is same uh, so let's dive into it deeper uh, first of all uh, whenever a song starts or uh, a song making process starts uh we all might think you know like what might be the song like what might be the music uh, genre or you know like what instruments should go through and everything um you know like uh, the the starting point of the song might differ but you know the work process and the workflow is almost the same for any song that uh, you know like that is being made except some you know like film scores or so what um basically what happens is that a song is uh where vocals uh, melody and the tunes come along with different arrangements of instruments and percussions with it that's what the song basically is and we can look into uh, the tracks that are being arranged here so we can see there is a track named vocals and this is a vocal that i just took from the internet uh, just the vocals of the charlie puts song and we can see acoustic guitar and this is something that i made using the freely available uh, sound in here so if we zoom forward and we can see how this uh, is i used an instrumental uh, instrument called acoustic guitar in here and it is freely available you can check it out in the website and piano roll as uh, you guys know it up guess it it's just uh, you know like placement of notes so there are two ways that you can do it if you have a midi keyboard or a midi controller you can press record and play it along or if you are you know like uh, accustomed to playing midi in your typing keyboard you can do that too but i generally prefer you know laying out notes using piano roll so what this piano roll does is that you can just place the notes according to the you know like notes timings and the no, uh, you know like Uh, placements where it should come and i'll just show you a demo or like how can how this can be done let's just say that we add a new track and for keys or something you can just you know, like place it here and then we can add it and we can yeah so we can place you know elongate or compress and we can move and you know, like move along the piano roll this is how you can you know, like place the notes for uh, music instrument and yeah and if we look closer there uh, you know you can also find something called a detroit uh, which is nothing but a drum kit's name and yeah like uh, if we could just solo it out in here we'll just hear these what i did here was just to take you know, some a pattern and then i just used the snare and high toms to you know uh, just bring out the song that i had in my mind and if we again would solo it out and listen this portion of the track here it gets a bit more interesting because here is where the song actually you know like comes to life the you know, like, the build up takes place so when when you been looking you been looking for oh. you might hear you know like thumping sound at the back and it's called kick uh, for those who don't know i used a particular you know sounding drum kit that i found in here one is detroit and driller kick detroit offers a bit more thump and driller kick has the mid Uh, ranges for uh, kick so i just you know like stacked it up to you can do this as well so let's say you have you know like a, a particular sound in your mind that you have heard in some song or say whatever and uh, you can't find the exact sounding instrument or exact sounding drum kit anywhere what you can do is you can actually uh, bring in two or more uh, instruments and stack it on top of uh, and this is called layering or stacking 
and by doing this you you can you know like just bring in um, like what the desired sound you can just achieve that a bit more or closer to what you had in your mind that's what i did here i wanted a kick that sounded a bit, a bit bassy but also had that mid uh, mid range as well that's what i used here to for the kicks and then we can hear the sub this is this is the bass line so the song it has a looping bass line through so i just play it using a, a, a you know like a basic bass instrument and then here it is played and this just gives you know this roots just gives that kind of magical element to the song in the main part as well as the build up part that's pretty much about you know like what happens in the mid section and coming to the main section uh, here you might have noticed that i have this you know like um, an audio file here and uh, as i said earlier you know this uh, platform is uh, has some limitations to it and you can't you know like completely uh, bring out all the sounds or all the you know, like, Uh, instruments in it so i just had some drum effects uh, pro programmed and output as a audio file previously i just imported it here you can do that by you know like you can find all these menus over here so you can import it using this option here and uh, it might be an mp3 or any audio file format so it, uh, the platform supports it and also if you have some uh, instruments in this track if you want to kind of export it for you know future use or if you want to use it in any other software let's say you can use this export uh, option and uh, you you have all these um, options here to export and uh, um, currently wave uh, audio file is free as uh, all this is a freemium software to try out advanced features you need to subscribe you need to have the subscription for the premium and yes that's pretty much about uh, tracks and everything and if we could just listen to this section without the voice we can get a better understanding of what all the additional instruments that go in through we don't, we don't, we don't talk anymore these are just the drums that form the main section of the song and then if you could listen this track this is just gives a bit of you know like um, a punchy element to the music in a typical pop song and i hope you guys you know like liked it and yep right now what we will do is um i'll try to make a song live um, a, a well known song uh and i'll also choose a song that is a bit easier to uh, prana uh can you play the vocals uh, only one time solo vocals also someone in chair was uh, talking about soloing the guitar instrument 
Sure, sure, sure. What I'll do is I'll solo out every track and play right now to just to demonstrate. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore like we used to do. I hope you guys had a bit of you know like idea of how it is you know like uh, what are all the instruments that go through and you know like when we stack up all these layers upon each and then it you know at the end it brings out the complete element of the song so yeah i think we'll move forward now uh and, Prana, just there was one question from youtube yeah yeah, yeah sure uh does this software have wind instrument in it to add so th this was a question by shridharan so okay. can you answer it? Sure. Let's let's look into it. If we do have any wind instruments here, uh, these are all all the instruments that are here, and you can see, you know, like there are some free plugins and there are some premium plugins. Um, I think you can find it in uh, orchestral, uh, orchestral category. Okay. Yeah, woodwind. Yeah, there are some. It is limited in the, you know, like in the free version, but yeah, I think you can access all these uh, instruments here. So it has pan flute, a clarinet, a basic clarinet, and a car. And yep, it does have wind instruments. Also talking about the instruments library, uh, I think you guys can also access this and see. Uh, these are all the instruments that are available to us. Um, in guitar section, we have acoustic guitars, different types of it. And also, one interesting thing that we can observe here is um, there are some, you know, like Indian instruments included here as well. You can see sitar and sitar all bends, bends at up and down, and yeah, and. Moving on further, we do have jazz guitar and pop guitar and rock guitar and bass and 808s. Um, I hope everybody knows what an 808 is, but if you don't know what it is, it is just a type of, uh, you know, like a bass, a drum or a kick drum with a bit of tune to it. So you might hear a lot of hip hop songs with uh, 808s in it. And that gives that, you know, kick with a bass line in it. Uh, uh, a really good uh, uh, example that everybody might know is that drum kit that comes in uh, the song Old Town Road. Uh, when you hear it, it will also have a bass line to it. So that is what basically an 808 is. We do have that as well here available. And going to orchestrals, we do have a brass section. Uh, this is also a wind instrument and cinematic uh, you know, a combination of different instruments too and harps these are all some processed instruments 
these are there are some solo instruments available here as well and string ensemble and string sections are like in string ensemble you will also you uh, have you know like a brass section or tubers over in the lower sections and uh, violos uh, uh, um, and other instruments in the mid range as well but in string sections you will exclusively have only the um, string instruments like the cello or viola or double bass violin etc and woodwind does have all these you know like uh, wind instruments and moving on to keys we do have choir sounds like um, you know, like that background the female vocalist that they gave a choir sound so all those and organ sounds are there pianos are there pitched percussion we'll be using this in the next uh, no like in, in, in the next demonstration that i'll be using and yeah and there are some other instruments available here as well i think it is uh, you guys can explore it yourself let's move forward and i'll open a new project over here if you guys do want to follow along with me and if you guys can i it would be really good but there is no compulsion that you really want to you know like follow along and make it it is uh, more than enough that if you guys can observe and you know like get the concept of how to uh, actually make a song on your own it would be great so like um i am thinking of you know replicating the song shape of you by ed sheeran i hope everybody knows that and the reason why i am choosing this is uh, it is a fairly easy song to make live and it also you know like um everybody most of you guys know it i guess so that's why it's a popular song firstly um i think i'll start by adding the main elements the main you know like melody to it first of all i need to find a, a similar sounding instrument to it so when we do hear that intro part that goes through uh, we would hear some sound like a, a xylophone or a um, what is it Uh, like a marimba kind of uh, sound so i'll go into pitched percussion as marimba and xylophone belong to the category pitched percussion i'll try to find uh, sound we do have marimba here but uh, unfortunately we can't try it out uh, we'll go with vibraphone or xylophone uh, pranav you can actually uh, hit the play button to demo its kind of sound when you are browsing through the instruments Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. So this was the sound that I actually wanted. That the the desired sound. But I uh, know, like, as unfortunately we can't access it right now. I'll go with the freer version. A free version of it. I think you know xylophone sounds a bit more closer to the intro part of the shape of you uh, if you can't you know like recognize what that part is i'll just you know like quickly play it for you um before we get started with anything uh, we should make you know like sure that the tempo of the song is set uh, as i know it prior that shape of you is of uh, bpm 96 i can you know like readily put it here but uh, when you are in a creative process uh, when you are trying to figure out the song or when you are starting it out it is better that you you know like set some familiar tempo that you have already worked with or you know let it in the default or you can also use the you know tap button here to kind of set the tempo that you desire So let's say I want a beat that goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I can actually do it like here.
and it's kind of i think you can hear now so to set the desired tempo that you want you can use this to uh, bring it out and if you are not sure you can actually you know leave it in the default and in the process you will definitely figure out that sweet spot where the song sounds you know like good to your imagination as you know it earlier uh, i'll just you know set the uh, tempo of this project to 96 and let's start out by first drafting out the notes here so too slow so to drop the notes over here you can just click the uh, click the region that you want to drop the notes and it will come there and to adjust the timing of the notes you can stretch it by clicking this slider here and yeah to draft the notes you you need to you know like if you want to zoom in or zoom out you can do that by pressing the control and using your mouse wheel to you know, like zoom in uh, horizontally and vertically uh, to zoom in or zoom out you can press the alt button and do the same so i need to have a, a beat that goes like tan 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 so i need to you know kind of figure out how it goes so let's see there is a four beat in shape so this goes 1 2 3 but my tune that i have in my mind goes like 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 so i you know like i should kind of um, adjust this uh, notes in such a way that that pattern is being followed over here so let me do that and show to you guys right now so that i have my you know like initial part of the song that i needed to get started with so this is the part that you know loops over the song uh, throughout the song from the start to end so what i can use is to use this looper button and i can just loop it through to how much ever i want second element that i'll be adding right here is the ba bass notes of the song or the bass line as it is called so it goes um i just added a new track with bass in it and it just goes along with the lead notes 
I'll first figure out what instruments to use. Mm. Let's go into bass synth. So I don't think I can find the desired instrument that I have in my mind through this bass library. So what I'll instead do is I'll go and check out a familiar patch that I know uh, that is in synths and pluck. So I'll just test out some uh, sounds in here which has that you know like ba bass pluck of the the baseline that is there in this song. I think I am I'm really good. You know, like I'm satisfied with this patch over here. It's called milk plug. And as demonstrated earlier, I will start out by first drafting the notes over here. I'll zoom in now that I already have put the you know like um, the initial part of the song I can easily trace out where the you know like baseline of this song comes uh, it actually follows the same rhythm as the lead of the song goes so I can just follow along and uh, put the notes in the pattern and I can loop it I'll demonstrate it right now to you so the chords of the song goes basically like C minor, F minor, A and B. So the bass line will be C sharp, C sharp minor, I'm sorry, and F sharp minor. So the bass line will be C sharp, F sharp, A and B. So I'll just you know, try to draft it through here. This is the basic um, bass line of the song that goes like this. So let's say I need to, you know, like um, kind of shift this, uh, shift the same pattern, one note or you know, like a couple of notes higher or lower. What I can do is I can press shift and select these notes. And again, press shift and use the arrow keys to shift it up or down. So I wanted it click here. Another easier way to do is, is to click this and right click on the notes that you selected and select change pitch. And you can see there are plus 12 and if you scroll down, there will be minus 12. So how much ever notes that you want to shift down or up, you can click that and it will get shifted. So yep, I feel like I need to shift these notes up 12 semitones. So yep, the plus and the minus level that are shown in the shift pitch indicates to each horizontal lines in these piano rolls or semitones of the notes as, as you can call it musically. So I feel this um, bass line is a bit, uh, you know, like adhering to the song that I had in my mind. this should be transposed as well yes.
So let's say you don't want to repeat the same pattern again. Instead, you want to have a small change, but uh, no, mostly the same pattern repeats through. You can click, and basically, you know, every every software has this copy paste thing. So you can Control C and Control V. So it gets pasted over here, and uh, I I want to make it a small change at the end section of the second pattern. I'll uh, make the changes over here. I think this is perfect and I'll just loop it through Coming to the uh, no percussion part, I think you know, like for the intro, the most of the instruments are covered. So let's say you already have a track that you want to use, or uh, already recorded portion of any instrument that you have. You can also use that in the software. You can add it through by clicking Add New Track, and you have this thing called Import File over here. So I'll add the percussion of this song in here. As you can see, I already have this track and I'd like to kind of trim it to my liking. So you can zoom it and trim it. What you can do is trim it over here and also let's say there is a huge section and you just need uh, the initial part of this loop, if, what you can do is you can right click and click on split region. So what it does is wherever this marker is, the seek slider or the marker is being placed, it slices the track over there and leaves the rest of the portion as it is. So I don't want this, I'll delete it. I just need this part of it. And I want it to be looped all over. Now, let's hear this. I think you know most of the loop is done and there are some small elements that are to be added so um if you could closely notice this song there will be some other small elements that are missing over here that will come in the bridge part uh, section so i think i'll just add them quickly without going into much detail it's just the same process just to select uh, the instrument that you want and then place the notes that you have in your mind into the piano roll. And then, you know, like just place it over the pattern that uh, wherever you want it. So I, I need the notes to start from here. So I go. And yep. I 
I find this sound liking to me. So I'll quickly plot the notes that I want. What I was trying to do right now was to make sure that the third part of this pattern lines up with the second note in these two patterns. That's what I was trying to do. And I have achieved it right now. So now I'm looking to actually copy these forward, but alter the notes in this. So I'll just copy this through. Okay, there is another problem that I can see right now. So Generally, when I'm just, you know, like moving it through, it might not lie on, you know, like exactly on the lines over here. So when you look through to your right, you can see snap to grid. There is an option like this magnet over here. So what this does is when you move these patterns through, it might move freely. And if you're okay with it, it's fine. But if you want to, you know, kind of bring it to these lines like it, or, you know, like bring it to the start of the track like this. So you can click that. So you know, like as soon as you bring it nearby, just just snaps there. I think you can observe it. Yeah. So that is snapped to it. And if you want to use it, you can. Right now I'm looking to actually. So if I want to select nodes in a single uh, in, in a single pattern, if I want to select all the nodes, and press Control A by clicking over here, select all the nodes, and then shift it down.
as you can see here, uh, timing of where the notes are placed and how the pattern is kept is really important because the timing is not met, uh, you can mess up the whole track and it would, it would not sound great. I think uh, the rest of the track sounds good, so I'll just copy paste it, and I'll try to add my guitar quickly uh, without wasting further time. Uh, it's just that if you want to add a recording track, you can just click the voice or mic, and you, know, you can just start recording. And uh, while recording, you can choose it to either your voice or to be guitars. And right now, I am going to record, you know, like. Uh, uh, normal card so, so I'll just choose indie acoustic for now and yeah I'll take my guitar I'll record it I'll pause now So hello everyone, uh, please stand by. Uh, as you can see, he's uh, trying to connect his guitar and record a track with it. So that requires uh, to configure his uh, recording interface that he has. So he has uh, disconnected his mic probably and is trying to record the guitar right now. For the time being, I can. I think I can take some questions uh, from the chat. So Utkar says uh, it seems to require much of practice and time. Uh, comparatively, if you compare with the uh, actual production software or those actually in, used industrially. Uh, they have so many more functions and menus to go through but uh, this online platform the sound wrap is uh, pretty straightforward so it will require uh, 
bit of getting used to everything. Yeah. Uh, if you have any question, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question. Um, hey, uh, I just want to ask what should be our next steps after this workshop? So now we can practice more, we can improve on it. Yeah, we're planning on having a having sent you like a backing track or a, just a bass track, and you have to add your own instruments and come up with a song of your choice. So should I pick a so one of my favorite songs and try to compose it on myself? Yeah, you can surely do that, but uh, uh, we are thinking of doing it uh, a bit differently this time. So we will send everyone the same track and everyone will work on the same file, actually. Uh, Gaurav, if, if you are composing any song, your favorite song, you can send it to Accord and we'll uh, like uh, uh, tell you how the song is and will you will guide you on that song. So yeah, that I'll can definitely. also be done. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. But uh, I am a beginner and I am watching this work so to get myself familiar with the topic right now. So I really don't know what should be my next step on it. Uh, Mohit, would you like to guide him? Yeah. Uh, you can actually try opening this uh, in your browser. Okay. And... Uh, I will just uh, go over the same same procedure that I have done uh, when I was discussing about this uh, UI and the interface and the uh, and the various track panels and the effect panels over here. Basically, all the menu and all the elements of this software. So what we uh, what you will do is uh, you open up this uh, in your browser. In, on any device, you can open it in your PC or any Android phone or smartphone. Yeah. So you will uh, get to see on the left hand side there will be the various instruments that you can be that you'll be able to add. So let's say you are uh, you want to record the vocals for you for your song. Okay? So you add with a track, click the Add New Track button, and then mm -hmm. a menu will pop up. You will uh, see it will let you choose what kind of uh, instrument you want to add. For this uh, purpose, you will add, uh, you will choose the voice or mic. Okay. Okay. You then click on that, then a new track will appear right on the left, on, on the left side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm actually doing it with you side by side. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. So you see, there's a on the new track that you just created, there are a few buttons over there. Yeah. Yeah. You see there's an R button. Mm -hmm. Then to the right side of it, there are other buttons. On yeah. the rightmost side, uh, there are two buttons, basically, that I missed to discuss about. So someone from the chat was saying that, uh, can you show me the, uh, can you mute the other tracks and uh, let the acoustic track play only? Right. So you can mute those tracks that you want and also just solo or just play the single track by placing the headphone icon over here. When you hover the mouse over there, you can actually see solo this track appears. Yeah. Yeah. So that means every other track will get muted and that only track will be outputted through the audio device, through your speakers basically. Okay. So these are some primary options we can do with our comp during our composition. Yeah, let's say you have uh, added many tracks. Okay, you have many. You have added many elements. You have added uh, synths, bass, drums, many different kind of drums. Let's say. So, let's say uh, beforehand uh, you had liked uh, some type of uh, drum patch or synth patch. Mm -hmm. 
that you have added previously and uh, say you do not want that to be in the song but you want that to be in the project itself okay, okay. so what you can do use a uh, just a mute it over there and it will be in the project file the song that you are working right now but it, it will not be played throughout the project or the final version of the song yeah okay. yeah when you are actually done with the song there are options to uh, save it as an mp3 in this case in this uh, browser you can save it as an mp3 in other softwares you can you will see uh, you will get to uh, you'll get to export in various other formats also you can render the file in any bitrate or any other parameter they want to set those are more uh, advanced features but for uh, this purpose you can actually save as and or export as mp3 okay. so let's say you have added a, a vocal track okay yeah what uh, your next step will be to hit the r button yeah yeah it will turn red yeah and when you are uh, selected with the mic track uh, you will see on the bottom part of the screen you will see the let me choose the input device can you see that um where, where you said up uh, on the lower part of the screen somewhere uh, there's lower, a, yeah lower. there's a big red uh, start recording button right yeah i think i should uh, present my screen also yeah i pressed yeah, it yeah. and there's a start test option and uh, below it there's an input default microphone it's saying about my microphone yeah just hold on i'm sharing my screen you can also follow along with this one Yeah. And while you were explaining this to me, Mohit, I have another question in my mind. Yeah. Like when I compose a song, then I should be my ears should be trained enough to exact to to find the accuracy where my notes should be placed so I can yeah. get my desired bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so how can are you I familiar with the, any instrument, any musical instrument? Yeah, like, I play guitar. Yeah, you can. You know then. Uh, there are some uh, reference notes from the guitar you can take okay say say you are playing uh, a chord or, or say a g chord okay yeah yeah the very basic chord uh, you 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 playing the g note itself so when you add the let's say we add a uh, add a piano okay okay so i added a piano over here yeah then yeah so when i add the piano over here uh, you can uh, click on the track okay okay then you come to the piano roll tab over in the middle mm -hmm. so when you hit the notes you will be able to listen to the notes right yeah so on the keyboard you can see uh, I can give you a basic example of how notes are placed on a keyboard. You see on the on a keyboard, uh, there are two black keys, right? Uh, can you uh, guide me again? I didn't listen. Yeah, uh, you can follow along over here or you may Google any picture on, on another tab. You can see. Uh, it's better if you add another track. You are open in the browser, right? You have opened yeah. this. Yeah. So you add a new track. No. Then from the add new track option, you choose the keys. Yeah. Second, second. So I got the grand piano in front of. Yeah. Me. Then the piano uh, keys are visible, right? Yeah. So over there, you see there are two black keys, right? Yeah, there are. Yeah. So the leftmost key of any piano or any keyboard will be a C, C note. Okay. Also called Sa in Indian music, Sa Re Gamapa. Okay. So this C note will follow along with, uh, will move to the right side and play the other no other key, the other white key actually. If you yeah. click that, you will see it is uh, saying D, right? 
Yeah, C4, C3, C5. Yeah, C, D, E, F, G. And, and once again, it will repeat itself and another octave. So they are following an octave. Yeah. When you go from uh, uh, one white key to the other white key, the beside uh, uh, two black keys on the upper side, it will change the pitch and it will stay the same here. Like uh, it will stay the same note, but a higher pitched one. Yeah. So we'll call them the octaves. So on the guitar, uh, same thing happens. So let's say uh, you want to play a song with G, OK? OK. So on the uh, on a keyboard, the G will appear accordingly. OK. Beside the, below the three black keys. Okay, you just click there, and you will see it's the G note. So on the piano roll, you can also see if you click and yeah, it just... draw the notes, yeah, you will see the G note will be played. Actually, they are also illustrating the different notes of C. Like I previously mentioned, C3, C4, C5. Yeah, C3, but... C5, and so forth. C7, but, C6. But how can I convert my G chord into its language? Hmm. So the also another uh, basic thing I can teach you on keyboard actually. Say you want to play a major chord, G major. You know G major chord, okay? Okay. So when you want to play a major chord on a keyboard, hmm. we'll follow along with the white keys only, okay? So the okay. say we are playing the C. Uh, let's start with C actually. Then we'll move over to G. Okay. So we'll first uh, first play the C note. Then C we'll, one. Yes, the C C key. Okay. Then we'll uh, skip the D and press the E key. Okay. Can you present your screen and show me how to do that? I'm not that. Yeah. yeah, I'm doing that right now. Uh, you can see. But just a minute. Okay. Mm. So can this you is... hear the audio? So the C4 is the C key. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's the C key. The actual uh, C that everyone starts, I think it's called C2, I think. I don't know. So like there are around eight chords that you usually play in guitar, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Yeah. So you are saying that C starts with C4 on keyboard. Yeah, you can start with that. And then A should start from C2, I guess. Yeah, on that octave, you can start with the nearest available A or, or any note you want, you want, you prefer. Okay. So let's say you are trying to play the major chord, okay? Hmm. You are watching my screen, right? Yeah. So here is the C key. Yeah. So we play, we will skip the D note. Okay. We'll play the E key along, like pressing two keys if possible. Okay, making sense. Yeah, you see uh, below the key, there's a keyboard legend over here. It's, it's saying Y, right? Yeah. Another one, it's saying I mm. or E. Then we'll play the G note with key P. Okay. So you press all three together, forms a C major chord. OK. Basic structure of the C major chord with three notes. Mm. Similarly, if you want to play, uh, play the G major chord, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll play the E key, like this E key. Then we'll skip the next note, then we'll play this note. We'll skip the other note, then we'll play this note, like this. Okay. That's the G major chord. So basically, I have I should also have some basic knowledge about keyboards. Yeah, for uh, for this uh, arranging process, actually, most of this work is uh, done on this piano roll alone. If you have a keyboard, 
a USB keyboard used with MIDI keyboard. You can perform live and also record live by playing. But if you do not have a keyboard, you have to resort to using this uh, piano roll. The, uh, okay. yeah, on the other tab, you can see it's piano roll. So let's say you want to play the C major chord. Likewise, we'll draw these three notes and let mm -hmm. it play. So it will play the C major chord. Okay. So visually, it's very easy to understand about the chord structures. Yeah, I have to invest some time on it. Yeah, yeah. OK. If you, you can also start uh, writing melodies by using this uh, piano roll. OK. OK, so that's all from my side by now. You, you, you can continue with the workshop. Yes, sir. Sure. I think Shankar had some questions. OK, let's proceed. Uh, Shankar, do you want to ask now or uh, at the end? So I think, can we proceed or should we wait? Uh, Shankar, are you there? I think we- Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm here actually. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, go on. Uh, yeah, yeah, my doubt is like, let's say this uh, uh, piano or whatever the instrument it is, they are basically discrete instruments, right? Like. Uh, we each and every key have distinct frequencies of sounds. Mm, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Mm, uh, but let's say I want to mimic a flute or a, a violin or something yeah, by bending yeah. the pitch. Yeah. So how will I be able to do it uh, in this? Because all I see is just discrete uh, whatever the yeah. blocks. So let's put it that you way. do. I think uh, uh, you might be familiar with the term called automation. But if not, I'll tell you what it is. So there is this thing yeah. when we you know emulate uh, uh, all these instruments using softwares, uh, we do have this constraint as you rightly pointed out. Uh, we can't actually kind of you know put that uh, non-discrete instruments or like you know, you know uh, instruments like violin where we can uh, uh, you know slide into e other notes easily and instruments like uh, flute as well. So you know like in in um, uh, Almost all the other uh, uh, softwares that are used to produce music, we do have this thing called automation, where we can actually kind of set the parameter which you know kind of slides over. So here we mm -hmm. do have uh, a basic automation for volume, and unfortunately there is uh, no automation here for the pitch uh, per se. Mm -hmm. But I'll just mm -hmm. show you uh, a small demo with volume. Yeah. So let's say I want to edit the volume of this particular track. So using automation, I can actually click around and, you know, like uh, add some points over here. And you now if I, if I kind of have a graph like this, so here the volume of this tracks gradually and slowly increases. In the same way, you can kind of, you know, like modify uh, the pitch of uh, track using automations. And unfortunately, okay. I can't show you that in this software, but in pretty mm -hmm. much any other software, it is readily available. So, yeah, that okay. is how you emulate. Okay, thank you. I would like to add Anything that. Else uh, I had in mind. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Go on, what you're saying. No, no, no. I, I, I had something in mind. I just forgot. Uh, yeah. yeah go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. So I'd like to add that uh, on uh, 
on a MIDI keyboard, you will see functions like uh, a pitch bend wheel. There will yes, be yes, yes. wheels on the right left side, I think. Mm -hmm. So on those, mm. are, you can, when you want to perform a piece, let's say, uh, when the accented notes comes, you can uh, modify the pitch by using the pitch bend wheel. Mm -hmm. There's one for the volume and other for, for the pitch bend to emulate uh, some Indian instruments or let's say violin. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to slowly uh, punch in the violin and let it uh, let the volume swell up gradually. So, so, so if the, I want to add any articulations, I should be yeah, yeah. using this kind of things. Yeah, you can use the pitch bend wheel. You can use physical faders actually if you have or you can okay. you can evaluate everything using the automation controls and another yeah. thing i'd like to add is uh, on the piano roll mm -hmm. uh, pranav you can demonstrate or i might uh, let's share my screen now yeah sure bro. go ahead yeah so on my screen you can see uh, the piano mm -hmm. roll that I have laid out few notes. Mm -hmm. On most uh, DAW or production software, digital audio orchestrations, as they're called, mm -hmm. uh, you will see a uh, control for adjusting the velocity of a note. So what do you mean by velocity? Uh, these MIDI notes have an assigned value from 0 to mm -hmm. 127. So you can adjust, okay. adjust those using uh, uh, in this seven one, bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can adjust mm -hmm. that by clicking this velocity icon over here. Okay. So when you hit this uh, icon, mm -hmm. you will see uh, here a slider appears, and you can see also. Uh, I assign value to it. If I max it out, you will see it becomes 127. Okay. And if I uh, drag it down, it will it becomes zero. So to okay. like hu uh, humanize this performance, you can yeah, yeah, yeah. adjust every velocities. Okay. Mm, so everything comes and uh, plays out slowly and gradually. Uh, this uh, this uh, this particular feature actually becomes very useful when programming drums, when programming acoustic drums, the drum kit. Mm -hmm. There are some mm -hmm. notes uh, the hi hats say. It sometimes plays mm -hmm. slowly and sometimes hit hard. Also the snare. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is hit mm -hmm. hard and sometimes it's uh, accented very very mm -hmm. slowly. So you can emulate those using this slider, mm -hmm. this feature over here. For other softwares, uh, this, these sliders will appear for each note below the note, mm. like over here somewhere. Mm. But uh, mm. in this uh, browser-based uh, tool, you have to click each button, then adjust it mm. by dragging up or down. OK. Yeah, OK, understood. So okay. Yeah, I got it. So one more doubt I have. I have noticed one thing. Um, while using this, I was trying out something uh, parallelly. Uh, I'm new to sound production. I I don't know anything about it to be honest. So what I noticed is, when I was uh, trying to play something using my laptop keyboard um, on the on, uh, by putting some synthesizer. Yeah. So I was uh, observing some delay between when I was um, that the instant while I press the yeah. key and I observe the sound. Is it just because it's an online platform, or uh, this is the case with uh, every mu music production software? Uh, there might be some issues with uh, latency using when performing huh. live. It might be due to the platform itself, or might be the hardware in some cases okay so you can uh, no uh, if you are also observing the same thing i think it might be uh, due to the platform so what i wanted to ask is if i use an offline platform will this issue be sorted or uh, yeah, can uh, you observe yeah. it 
if you mm. you can try any uh, offline actual uh, program i would recommend uh, using reaper it's free to download and reaper use. okay uh, hmm. uh, reaper.fm the website uh, okay. they also have uh, many free tutorials available over there you can try that okay. also they will allow you to adjust the latencies say you do not have a very powerful system in mm. that case it will allow you to focus every resources that you have on a single track mm. so when you whenever you are playing something all the actual producers that record songs they actually uh, make every track the live processing offline right uh, hello, sorry your voice was breaking maybe uh, due to my internet issues can you repeat it again yeah to minimize the latencies yeah can you hear me mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to minimize every uh, latency or processing delays, there are mm -hmm. some features in the DOS software to make mm -hmm. live uh, effects and everything go offline and okay. focus on the recording performance. So they mm -hmm. you just uh, mute every other track and perform to a single beat or metronome, or let's mm -hmm. say the drum track. Then when you are done mm -hmm. with the performance, uh, you would then preview the performance by unmuting everything. That can be done, mm -hmm. but uh, over here it might be due to the uh, platform itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. So uh, yeah, let's resume with it. And I have recorded, uh, you know, like the guitar from in the in this track here, and also I've added uh, the bass line. So uh, if you would remember, we did add a small bass here. But then when we are proceeding proceeding to you know like into the main sections, uh, we would. Like usually we will prefer another uh, additional bass to layer over just to have that powerful lower end in the song. So that's why I just added another bass. So just nothing but just copying these notes and pasting it over here. So uh, And we are almost 90% done with the loop. The last thing that we would add is just a small drums to top it off. So let's say I'm just adding a small drums track and like I, I just can, you know, like uh, play around with the loops that we have over here. So uh, I I kind of have a pattern in my, um, you know, like mind that goes like, uh, you know, like goes along with the lead over here. So I'll just kind of, you know, have, um, draft it out through here, live. And also there is this a uh, small slider over here it's just a repeater so what it essentially does is let's say you just want to repeat uh, you, you want one portion one section of this track to be repeated just to here or just to you know like um, edit the tracks that you have what you can do is you can select the regions over here uh, i i need this particular section to be repeated and then click this section so that only that section is being repeated. So I want to hear what my drum pattern is. So I want to loop it through. So I just click this part, select it and click this part in order to, you know, like just repeat over this. Another thing you can do is by selecting the region and also clicking over here. This is also a repeat button. We do have these two ways to access it. So yeah, I'll mute the other tracks just to hear the drums alone.
um i think this pattern would do for now uh, i'll quickly unmute the other sections and remove the loop and copy this again and i think we do have a loop can notice that i can't hear my guitars properly even though you know like i have recorded it and you know like have a bit of volume so what i can do is i can go into this effects tab effects tab is there for each and every track over here but you know like it is uh, very useful when you want to you know like customize that uh, one you know like you want to have your sound customized to your own feel so effects tab is really useful and we do have a lot of effects over here and effects is a completely different i know like it's another topic that you know it requires a lot of uh, input to be discussed about i'll just give a small uh, you know like um walk through over what effects are just like something you know like you add it to the uh, tracks and then it just you know like amplifies or what is it it just enhances the track um than what it is raw so we can see that there are some equalizers preamps over here so what basically an equalizer is that we all know that it kind of you know like um manages the frequency bands in and around so let's say you want a very bass boosted sound or you want a very you know high pitch uh, like um a cleaner sound you can use equalizers to manage that and preamp is nothing but it just amplifies the uh, sound that is being input i i kind of want uh, the this guitar track to have some amplification there is also something called a compressor so what a compressor is that does is that it kind of uh, you know reduces the difference between the maximum and the minimum volume to be put in simple words so yeah like that's what it does and i just want this to be a bit compressed you can use either this one this is you know like used mostly but if you want to kind of you know have a very simple but then you uh, you know you want the same output you can use this single knob compressor and yep i think now it will good so let's you know like listen to the whole loop that we have done right now the loop that is a basic loop that can be constructed and it was just a demo for it and uh, yep yeah, i think that's it for now i hope you guys liked it and let me know what you guys think yep yeah, this is just it guys do you have any questions if you have any questions you can unmute and ask yeah i have one question go so ahead mostly whatever the like the volume controls or whatever which i'm doing here mostly it's like uh, in a way that i'm using my mouse and dragging it and kind of thing uh, for example if i want to uh, set the volume to 6 or something and i will have to use my mouse and drag it right i find it a little bit hard uh, is there any way that i can uh, give numerical in inputs to it somehow 
uh let me just try that out quickly i don't think uh you know we can do like that but i don't know let me just uh look into it okay. yes, i don't know i find it a little bit hard to use my mouse and drag and i mean uh it is a very common feature in other applications i don't think it is okay. this software yeah but you can yeah, i try I tried to search it. I was unable to find it. So yeah. <laughs> also, in the free version of this uh, of Soundtrap, you are limited to using automation for one track only. No, not about the automation. Uh, for example, uh, can I present my screen? If it's okay. Uh, yes, yes, go on. Go on. Okay. Uh, how do I do that? I'm unable to present. I'm unable to present. You are not allowed to present something. Like uh, you you might have got the access. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For example, something like this is there. Uh, oh, sorry, I stopped. Okay, can you hear me now? And uh, can you see the screen? Yes, it is visible. Uh, for example, here, if I want to adjust the volume, it's kind of uh, awkward to do it this way. Yeah, and yeah. I'm unable to find a set point. You know, when I'm trying to drag down, it's going up, and if uh, I go up, it it's kind of edge, going yeah. down. So are you using it would be nice. If I... hmm? Are you using the trackpad of your laptop or? Physical... No, no, no. I'm using a mouse. Uh, does it, it would be nice if I can. DPI? Yeah, it can. So you may want to reduce the DPI and do that. Uh, oh, I for this uh, for this UI, actually, there is no option to add a numerical input. In others, you can set a value. OK. And let's say I want to crop this ad additional part out. Uh, I won't be able to mention a time after which it, it gets cropped, right? I will have to manually yeah. send it here. Yeah, it yeah. will automatically get cropped mm. to a grid. If you have that uh, snap to grid button, on the left side, snap to? Not, there's a magnet icon, right? On the, Let's say, wait, let me extend up, it. Upper left. Yeah. Upper left? Uh, upper right, I mean. Uh, Sorry. Upper right. Magnet icon. Where, where is it? I can't see. White one. Oh, okay, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snap to grid. Yeah. Oh, okay. If, if you have it enabled, it will or actually snap to grid. If you disable it, it you can position the. Uh, track freely okay let's say i enabled it now what should i do to snap it through here uh, it is actually disabled you have disabled that so it is uh, okay now now you have enabled it so when okay. you uh, when you are trimming the track by pressing the uh, on the on the track uh, corner you you get your mouse on okay. the corner the bottom bottom yes. icon mm -hmm. and when you click and drag it you can drag it yeah it gets uh trimmed right yeah oh ah, okay this is convenient so if, you, if you if you disable that uh, snap to it you can position it freely anywhere anywhere i want yeah precisely you can do that also you can uh, move the tracks when actually dragging the clicking and dragging the ah, yeah. that, that i i kind yeah. of find it yeah um, it, it actually uh, uh you can also do that without disabling that uh, you can hold control and position okay. the track. Yeah. I say uh, enabling the. If I press snapper. control, it's kind of zooming and zooming out. Oh no! Oh, like, oh, I have to select a particular. Yeah, thing. while dragging. Still, I am unable to. You you disable that first. Uh, you oh, actually. I have to disable. You enable. Okay, that. I'll have to enable it. Still, I am. It's just zooming in and zooming in. Uh, click a track first. Click and drag. Click and drag, yeah. Then hit control. Possible. Hit control. Okay. Then zoom in. 
No, it's just right? zooming in and zooming in. No, for me, actually, it's actually during the precise. Oh, process. shift, actually. Yeah, I'm pressing shift and it's kind of working fine. Uh, that's weird because uh, it's control for maybe, me. maybe my uh, I don't know my browser preferences something might be that might be fine thank you right so let's uh, wind up the session right yeah yeah okay uh, thank you very much yeah some of them are for you know, like just the solo of the guitar part, so I'll just quickly show that and we can definitely find it. Okay. So the, here is the solo of the guitar that I just recorded quickly. I'll just snap it to here. Right there. I think you have reverb enabled on the guitar track. Uh, is it? I haven't added any little yeah, effect. But, uh, but the default one that we were discussing yeah. yesterday. Yeah, yeah, OK. okay. I'll just quickly try to do this. Yeah, yeah, this one, this one. OK, OK. I think it is good. Yeah, so the chords are C sharp minor, F sharp minor, A major, and B major. Yep. Yeah, it's fine. Aditya, I think we are done. OK, thank you, Pranav. And uh, thank you, Mohit. Uh, the workshop was truly insightful. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being a part of this workshop. So guys, we will be rolling out the task forms shortly. So you can submit it on or before Sunday. It's uh, the 30th of uh, July, right? So don't forget to submit the task forms. And um, kindly fill out the feedback form as well. It will be shared in the chat box. And uh, before signing off, we have an announcement. So we are having a singing competition named uh, Swarotsav going on as a part of uh, a God's anniversary celebration. So if you are a singer and haven't registered for it yet, go ahead and register. Uh, you can find the registration forms uh, in the emails uh, and on a God's Instagram page as well. So stay connected with the God on social media platforms to receive regular updates about our future events. And we hope this uh, experience has been enriching for everyone. And we look forward to seeing you again in our future events. Thank you once again. And may your musical journey continue to flourish. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.